Okay, in this video, we are gonna write spherical coordinates for a right circular cylinder. And there's a bunch of stuff you need to know, so I'm just gonna summarize it on a first page here. We need to know that x is rho cosine theta sine phi, y is rho sine theta sine phi, and z is equal to rho cosine phi. So those are kind of the basic equations that you need to know. Uh, we also need to know how to find rho theta and phi, so uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to rho squared. Uh, it turns out that x squared plus y squared is also equal to rho squared sine squared of phi, which is very useful to know in a lot of problems. Um, it's actually gonna be useful in this one, uh, but I'm gonna go through all the steps anyway so you see where that comes from. And then uh, theta is the inverse tangent of y over x, where you need to be really careful about that. So it's actually easier to think of that as tan of theta is y over x and think about the point in the xy plane. And then phi, you don't have to be as careful with, is the inverse cosine of z over rho. All right, so those are the things we need to know. And now let's just do a problem. So what we're gonna do is convert x squared plus y squared equals four, which is a right circular um, cylinder that is uh, kind of centered on the z-axis. So if you picture uh, x squared plus y squared equals four in the xy plane, and then just put it on an elevator and have it move all the way up and move all the way down, you get your cylinder. And then we wanna write parametric equations for the surface. So let's see if we can do this. So I have memorized that x squared plus y squared is equal to rho squared sine squared phi, but I'm not gonna just use that because uh, I'm gonna show you where it comes from. We're gonna work it out. So we start with our equation, and then we just do the substitution. So I know that x is rho cosine theta sine phi. So I need to square that. I know that y is rho sine theta sine phi. So I need to square that. And then this whole thing is equal to four. And now what I can do is I'm just gonna expand everything. So uh, basically everything ends up squared when you do this. So just going through and squaring. But at this point, you can kind of look at it and you can see they both have a rho squared. Um, they both have a sine squared phi. So I'm gonna factor both of those out of both terms. So I'll end up with rho squared sine squared phi, and then the quantity cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta. But that's always exciting when that shows up. So this whole thing equals four. So the thing in parentheses there, cosine squared plus sine squared, that's just equal to one. That's the Pythagorean identity. So this is one, which means we're down to rho squared sine squared of phi is equal to four. Now I need to take square root. Um, it's technically plus or minus, but you don't lose anything if you just go with the positive. So I'm gonna say rho sine of phi is equal to two. And then I'm gonna divide through by sine of phi. And when you divide by sine, so you have two over sine, but one over sine is equal to cosecant. So I'm gonna write it as rho is two cosecant of phi. So this right here, that's the spherical equation of our um, right circular cylinder. So we need to do a little bit more um, because we wanna write the parametric equations, but we're done if it's just convert to spherical. So we've done it. Um, now let's try to write the parametric equations for our surface, all right? So we start out the way that you usually start out with this. You just, uh, we know that X is rho cosine theta sine phi and y is rho sine theta sine phi and z is rho cosine phi. So we're gonna make the substitutions. So x is rho and then cosine theta sine phi. So there's something interesting that happens there but let's leave that for now. y is equal to rho which is two cosecant of phi and then sine theta sine phi so the same interesting thing happens here, but again, we're just gonna leave it for now. And then z is equal to rho and then cosine of phi. So it's gonna be two cosecant phi and then cosine of phi. Okay, so now if you look at x, we have two cosecant of phi, cosine theta, sine of phi, but cosecant of phi is one over sine of phi. So actually we can rewrite x as just two cosine theta we can do the same thing with y. And then for z, um, you end up with cosine over sine, which is cotangent of phi. So in the first two, phi actually is kind of canceled out. And then in the last one, there's just no theta. So let's think about what we can use for our bounds. 
So theta can just go zero to two pi, not a problem. Now the issue here is uh, cotangent uh, is not defined at zero or at pi. So I'm gonna say that phi just goes from zero to pi because of the cotangent. If you look at this and if you've dealt with um, cylindrical coordinates, you kind of recognize this is basically the cylindrical coordinates for a cylinder where cylinders look really nice. Um, so we basically kind of wrote the circle using polar coordinates, x equals r cosine and y equals r sine. And then z is two cotan of phi, but cotan just has a range of all reals from zero to pi. So like it might as well just be z is equal to z. Um, and then we would just have cylindrical. So it's kind of nice because they're basically the same thing. It kind of confirms what we're looking at uh, and that's it. All right, so I hope you found this helpful and good luck.